From being the patient of a mental asylum to the villainous nurse of one, Sarah Paulson has become a force to be reckoned with in the world of horror and beyond. Join me today as we take a look at some of Paulson's most iconic roles. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Matt Rogers. Sarah Paulson first started making a name for herself in the mid-90s, landing numerous supporting roles, however not really getting any breakout roles for quite some time. Just a few minor characters in some TV shows and movies of varying calibre. But everything soon changed when TV producer superstar Ryan Murphy crossed her path. Who's Ryan who? Ryan who? Ryan Murphy. 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 Ryan Murphy. I don't know who that is. And now it's rare to find one without the other. Paulson had a focal role in one episode of Murphy's first major successes in the show Nip Tuck. A small role, yes, but that was just the beginning of big things to come. Now Ryan uh, did offer me that part at a party. I said yes immediately, which sort of was uh, fortuitous because that's basically how every single thing has happened since then too. He's like, you're doing it, okay. Paulson was promoted to a few cameo appearances in the first season of arguably one of Ryan Murphy's biggest accomplishments, American Horror Story. She was then upgraded to one of the main protagonists in the second season, Asylum. And the fact that she could go head to head with acting legend Jessica Lange and not be overshadowed was an incredible feat. You don't have any idea what I'm capable of. Well then, <laughs> look at you, Miss Lana Banana. Now, a bit of a spoiler warning for that season. Paulson's character, Lana Winters, had a huge emotional range to play. The confidence of her as a well-renowned journalist, the vulnerability of a wrongly incarcerated mental patient, and the prisoner of a sexual predator. So Ryan Murphy obviously liked what he saw and continued the horror story tradition of recycling Paulson every season to a different character. Each as well written and complicated as the last. She even played a character with two heads in the fourth season, both played by her. Then Murphy started another project in the form of American Crime Story. And Ryan thought to himself, you know what this show needs? Sarah Paulson who then played Marsha Clark, the lead prosecutor of the O.J. Simpson case. And as expected, she brought an incredible weight to the role. Another Ryan Murphy show meant another role for Paulson, but when it really started getting crazy was in the eighth season of American Horror Story, Apocalypse. Murphy said to himself, you know, having her play one character's obviously not enough. Let's bring back another one of her characters from the third season. Hmm, still not enough. Let's also throw in the character she played in the first season, and then she can play all three characters in the one season. Miss Venable, there was a bad accident on the 101. Not as bad as the accident that brought you into the world, I'm sure. Now, I wouldn't categorise Paulson as a character actor that completely transforms her mannerisms and voice for different roles, but even though some differences in her characters were subtle in Apocalypse, they were differentiated enough to forget that you're just seeing Paulson in different wigs. Then finally Hollywood started taking Paulson a lot more seriously, and she nabbed some good roles in 2018 and 2019, including the Netflix adaptation of Bird Box, The Doctor in M. Night Shyamalan's crossover event Glass, and Ocean's 8, and she really started creating a confident, cool, yet sometimes menacing set of characters. It's amazing to meet you. It is simply extraordinary. One that really stood out for me as out of her usual acting comfort zone was The Goldfinch, which is a really great movie about a boy and the importance of a painting he took from a museum. Paulson plays a drug addict stepmother type and it's a joy to see her without polish, which is a rare occurrence. But where Paulson's strengths were really showcased was in Netflix's Ratchet, or Ratchet as they pronounce it. She's definitely been in similar asylum backdrops in previous roles, but not quite like this. The quiet, collected nuances of the classic villain were expertly played and chilling to watch. Excuse me, you're eating my peach. What are you gonna do about it? What are you, deaf? No. Just thinking of all the things I'm going to do about it. Now, despite the awe-inspiring costumes and breathtaking cinematography, Ratchet seems to be getting some pretty poor reviews. A lot of criticisms I don't necessarily agree with, as it stands way above a lot of other Netflix originals that have reared their ugly head recently, but I suppose that's not saying a lot. But the consensus of Paulson's performance is overly positive, and for good reason. Which really makes me want Ryan Murphy to start a series of spin-off shows of classic villains seen from their perspective. But for now, he's got his eyes set on his new portfolio of Netflix shows, as well as the next season of Horror Story and Crime Story, also starring... Well, I think you get it by now.
But what's your favourite role of Paulson's? There sure is a wide range to pick from, so I'd love to hear what you think. I'll be down there in the comments. But be sure to subscribe for weekly videos covering your favourite movies and TV shows. If you subscribe during this video, then welcome aboard. And if you had a good time hanging out, then spank that like button. This is Matt Rogers, and that is all. Thank you.